Lidocaine is a pretty potent local anesthetic that has a lot of different applications. The most familiar use is probably the use by the dentist to numb your teeth. It's also used in other things like creams and topical ointments for minor pain relief. In this video, I'm going to be extracting some lidocaine from an over-the-counter product, but in a future video, I might synthesize it from scratch. If you're interested in knowing more details about local anesthetics in general, and just a little bit on how they work, you should check out my video on the synthesis of benzocaine. I was going to be lazy and copy-paste my intro from the other video, but I decided it's better if I just link back to it. Anyway, without further stalling, we can get on with the extraction. For this experiment, you're going to need some maximum strength anal lube by Passion. This is the best product for extracting lidocaine because it has the highest concentration of 5% and it has no emulsifiers or surfactants. Nicely enough, the only chemical that's required for the extraction is sodium hydroxide. To start out, we fill a beaker with a little bit of distilled water. Then we add pretty much an arbitrary amount of sodium hydroxide to it. Then, using the magnetic stirrer, we stir until we get a nice clear solution. Dissolving sodium hydroxide releases quite a bit of heat, so by the end the solution might be steaming a little. We then open up the brand new, never before used bottle of lube and pour it into a beaker. You can see it's pretty goopy, so I squeeze the bottle and I do my best to get out as much as possible. However, no matter what, there's always going to be a little bit left in the bottle, but that's okay because we'll wash it a few times. So we pour in some distilled water, cap, and then shake it vigorously. This might produce a little bit of foaming or bubbling, but that's okay. Once it's been shaken and thoroughly mixed, we can uncap it and add it to the rest of the lube. I did a second washing just to clean the bottle as much as possible, but at this point it was already pretty clean. You can see the more watery top layer is just floating on top of the thicker lower layer, and when I turn on the stirring, the bottom layer kind of just bubbles up. Even if the beaker is lifted up and shaken manually, it doesn't really mix all that well. To get it to all be one homogeneous mixture, we need to add more water. I topped the beaker off to about halfway, but the amount of water that I added was pretty arbitrary. We just need to add enough to get a uniform solution and not two layers. As the bubbles start to clear, you can see we don't have any layers anymore, and just for good measure, I test the pH, and it seems to be around 7. So at this point, we can start to add the sodium hydroxide solution that we made earlier. You can see that the moment that it's added, a white precipitate crashes out, and this is our lidocaine. What we're doing here is pretty simple, and we're effectively just freebasing the lidocaine. For the lidocaine to be soluble in water-based lube, it needed to be the salt version lidocaine hydrochloride. This salt version is very water-soluble, but it's also slightly acidic, so this means if we add a base to it, we can neutralize it. When this salt is neutralized, we'll get free base lidocaine, which is extremely insoluble in water. So I keep adding sodium hydroxide and testing the pH until I get to around a pH of 14. Once the pH of 14 is achieved, almost all of the lidocaine should exist as the free base. And now, the lidocaine can be isolated by vacuum filtration. I would say a vacuum filter is really necessary for this because gravity filtration would just take forever. Eventually most of the water is gone and we're left with the lidocaine at the bottom, but it's a little gooey. To get rid of the gooeyness, we just wash the lidocaine a few times with some distilled water. With each washing, we stir thoroughly using a glass stir rod to break up any large chunks. After washing it a few times, the lidocaine is definitely cleaner, but it's still a little bit gooey. For now, this is okay though, and I transfer the lidocaine blob to a beaker. And then we pour in more of the lidocaine suspension and filter it off. We do it exactly the same way that we just did it, and we keep repeating it until everything in the beaker is filtered. 
We keep doing this, and we're left with a decent amount of wet lidocaine. So with all of our lidocaine in the beaker, we add some distilled water to try to clean it up a little. We mix it around to try to break up all the large chunks and try to get rid of all of the water soluble stuff. So eventually most of the large pieces are broken up and we're ready to filter it off. It's transferred back to my nice fritted filter and the water is vacuumed off. To this I then add a little bit of distilled water. Then just like I did in the beaker, I mix it around and try to wash the lidocaine. When the lidocaine is free of all the water soluble stuff, it should be a free flowing powder, whereas right now it's kind of clumped up. After I think I've done a decent washing job, I vacuum off the water. Then more water is added and I keep repeating this until I feel it is clean. After several water washings, you can see that although it's still not perfect, it's a lot more powder-like than before. There are some little bits that stick together, but overall I would consider this a powder. So now we have some free-flowing lidocaine freebase, and it looks pretty clean, but actually looks can kind of be deceiving. To clean it up, we add it to a beaker and we drop in a stir bar. Then, using a squirt bottle, I add in ethanol until all of the lidocaine dissolves. Lidocaine is extremely soluble in alcohol, so it really shouldn't take a lot to dissolve everything. As I kept stirring, things were dissolving well, but you'll notice this black clump that's floating around. I'm honestly not really sure what this is, but it's definitely not lidocaine. Once everything's dissolved, we set up a quick gravity filtration using a funnel and a cotton plug. We then filter through all of our ethanol lidocaine solution. The cotton plug, the beaker, and the funnel are all washed thoroughly with ethanol to make sure that no lidocaine stays behind. Then with stirring, we squirt in water to crash out the lidocaine. The more water that we add, the less and less soluble the lidocaine will be in the solution. In theory, if we do this really slowly, we can probably grow some pretty nice crystals. However, I wanted to go quickly, and actually surprisingly, even when you go quickly, you still get crystals. Eventually, upon one of the additions, the solution will get cloudy. The cloudiness means that there's free lidocaine floating around, but the concentration isn't high enough for it to form any crystals. That's okay, and we'll just keep adding water to increase the amount of lidocaine that's crashed out. And as we do this, eventually crystals will start to form like you see here. At this point, I kind of just went crazy and poured in a bunch of water. After this large addition, we're left with a relatively clear solution with a lot of crystals floating at the top. These crystals are then separated from the water by transferring them to a nice clean fritted filter. The water is vacuum filtered off and just like before we wash the crystals a few times with water. Each of the water washings is also used to wash out the beaker to make sure that none of the lidocaine stays behind in it. Finally, we wash the sides of the filter using a little bit of water, and we let the lidocaine dry by pulling a vacuum on it for a few minutes. What we're left with is some very nice, slightly wet lidocaine crystals. I laid out the lidocaine, and I just let it dry overnight in air. In the morning, I was left with some pretty dry lidocaine, and when I weighed it, it came out to be about 6.5 grams. Unfortunately, I didn't weigh the lube before I used it, so I don't know what the theoretical yield is. Anyway, 6.5 grams is more than enough for me. It's really important that you just let it dry it in air, because it has a really low melting point, and if you try to dry it in an oven, something like this will probably happen. The method that I showed in this video might work on other products that contain lidocaine, but I can't guarantee it. I did try it on a few others, and none of them worked, and on top of that, all of the ones that you can easily get from the store will probably have a maximum concentration of 1%. To make the extraction the most time efficient, you really do want to work with the highest concentration possible.
Also, the biggest tip that I can probably give is don't try to do any extractions using organic solvents. I've tried this and it really just makes impossible emulsions that never separate. Anyway, that's it for now and I'll see you on the next one. Again, here's a list of the videos that I'm currently editing and future videos I plan to film. In the videos being edited category, you can vote for the one that you want me to publish next, and in the future video category, you can vote for the one that you want me to film next. Also, if you're feeling generous, please donate to my Patreon account, because with a bigger budget per video, I can do more things. Also, just as some added information to this generic outro, I've actually gone ahead and made a YouTube fan page. When I get my act together, I should be able to set up polls there where people can vote on the next video. Anyway, that's all for now, and I'll see you on the next one.